Greetings, greetings all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspired by dreams shop. It's a unisex brand and it's preppy streetwear. Some for you to just add something new to your closet. Dressing outside of the box. Okay, today's episode, this is a surprise episode I wanted to present to you guys today. And it's all about is flirting on social media cheating? What? And there's so many different opinions on this whole subject. I wanted to bring it all together and so we can try to come to some kind of solution here. Some people say it's micro cheating. Others say it's not cheating. So we're going to dive right into this whole situation and see what's going on and get to the bottom of this. Love y'all. Subscribe. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Flirting is cheating. Linking up and hiding it from your partner is cheating. Entertaining, messaging, snapping, and texting someone behind your partner's back is cheating. Once you start hiding, deleting, or putting your phone on do not disturb, it's cheating. Stop watering down cheating because the truth be told, it doesn't have to be physical. Disrespect and betrayal always start mentally before it turns physical. I'm not gonna lie, if I'm keep looking you up, I'm interested. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> I know, like, let's oh, be honest. Let's be for real. Let's be for real, like stop. If I keep looking you up con on a constant basis, I'm not talking about every other month or once a month, cause okay, maybe I don't care about you. If I'm looking you up, I have someone that I look up every day. <laughs> okay. Yes, and if you call me, I'll answer. Like, okay. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate if cheating or just like liking somebody's picture on social media or maybe just interacting with somebody if it's cheating. So this is this can get very tricky and deep. Let's keep going. So folks be acting like cheating only means sleeping with somebody else. Nah, just like you can have microaggressions, you can have micro cheating too. All that little flirting at work with your work wife, work husband. You know, if your partner had a work wife or work husband, you wouldn't like it. Micro cheating. Low key commenting under suggestive photos with like hard eyes and like all that stuff. Micro cheating. Keeping in contact with an ex or somebody that you used to sleep with. Micro cheating. Of course, them secret dating app profiles that you done kept or forgot to delete. Micro cheating. Keeping those past nudes or videos from past relationships or encounters. Micro cheating. What? And this one might just be me, but sharing personal details or intimate details or, or always complaining about your partner to somebody outside the relationship, mm, that's micro cheating to me. Cause why are you so hypercritical of your partner? <laughs> you ain't got like nothing nice to say. <laughs> you love them, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> that's micro cheating to me. Women cheat just as much as men. They're just better at it. And if anything, they do a lot more micro cheating. What I mean by this mm -hmm. is one of the things that women can do that men can't is on a daily basis, they can plant seeds for cheating without realizing. So if she just posts a beautiful picture, guys can comment and she can say, thank you. Da, 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 and that tiny thing is happening on a daily basis. Whereas for men, they can't shoot their shot with that many girls and get a reply every day. So we're in living in a time where if you wanted to be a female cheat, it'd be the easiest time to be that way. Five examples of micro cheating. And so many of you are doing the last one and you say you're the most loyal person in the world, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Number one, secretly messaging someone. You're over there hiding your phone from your partner, messaging this person. You don't want your partner to know you're messaging. <laughs> you might not be doing nothing, but you're still keeping it away from your partner. And that's a micro cheating right there. Number two, flirtatious joking maybe somebody at work you're laughing with them and shit flirting <laughs> you have a very pretty face but <laughs> micro cheating number three having secret friendships you're friends with this person and your partner has no idea 
you're friends with that person. Maybe your partner doesn't really like the person, but you're still friends with them, so you don't tell them. If you're keeping the friendship away from your partner, that is micro cheating, all right? Don't do that. You shouldn't be hiding anything from your partner. This is your life partner. If this is the person you really wanna be with, if this is the person you wanna get married to or you're already married to, you cannot, keep be, uh, you cannot be keeping stuff like this from them. You hear me? Let's get into the next one. <laughs> so many people do this one and think it's okay. All right? Maybe you and your partner have some agreement, blah, 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 but universally, this is not okay. Maintaining friendship and contact with your ex. Unless you and your ex have a kid together, there's no way you two should be maintaining contact, being friends and all that stuff. No, unless you have a kid together, I respect that. So for the kid, you need to have, you know, be cordial. But if you and this person have no kids together, nothing, but you want to be BFF with this person, oh, he is just my friend, oh, she's just my friend. We just friends and blah, blah. No. You can't do that. That's micro cheating. Even if you're not doing anything, <laughs> it's still micro cheating. And this last one, so many of you do it, but you don't know it's micro cheating. Complaining about your partner to other people is different if you're coming to me, you know, the coach. But random people, friends, family, you're complaining about your partner to them. That's not being loyal to your partner. You're going somewhere else saying how shitty they are, how terrible they're being, all this and all that. Instead of going to your partner and having a conversation with them to resolve the issue without fighting, finding solutions to the problem, you want to go complain and, and, and talk shit about them to other people. Come on, really look at that. Do you think that's loyalty? <laughs> that's micro cheating. Stop doing that. Come on now. I'm going to yeah. give you some examples and I want you to yeah. tell me if you think this is micro cheating. Okay. Always replying to a specific person's Instagram story. I don't want to sound crazy, but kind of micro cheating. Double tapping your ex's Instagram photos. Not always. I think it depends on what it is. Paying more attention to someone who isn't your partner than your actual partner at a party or event. Really depends. I'm Need not good at this. Yeah. Muting someone or deleting a text exchange so your partner won't find out you're chatting. If you know you're doing something wrong and something that will upset your partner and you're going out of your way to make sure they don't find out. Yeah. And then this one, sharing personal details about sexual tastes, kinks and fantasies with someone who isn't your partner. Yeah. I could be discussing my sexual kinks and fantasies with, with you me. and that's not crossing a boundary. Yeah. But if I'm saying it to a work colleague who I think is kind of cute and there's like a bit of a flirty undertone, that's crossing a boundary. Yeah. I just seen a post that said men will cheat on women that are good for their souls with women that are good for their image. And I'm just about to sh myself. Nine times out of 10, the person that's cheating is hiding who they're cheating with. It can't be that good for your image if you hiding it. And the person that you're cheating on can't be that good for your soul if you're trying to destroy them. So many times we internalize the reasons we're being cheated on. Well, did I cook enough? Should I have dressed up more? You didn't do sh wrong, but pick a person who lacks self-control, self-discipline, respect for you and respect for themselves. We've seen some of the best men get cheated on. Some of the baddest women get cheated on. Some of the most awesome parents in the world be cheated on. A person cheats because they don't have respect for their partner or their relationship. Cheating is selfish. You'd rather give in to your temptations and desires rather than be faithful and save the relationship that you claim means the world to you. It's going to trigger all the cheaters, but listen, do what you do. Let's just stop making excuses for it and call it what it is. I cheated on my wife when we were dating. And it got to the point where, like, I had to really respect. I think sometimes when people cheat, they make the assumption that the person that they or the people that they affected have to move to healing as fast as they want them to so that they can feel better about themselves. When the truth of the matter is that no matter what your reason for cheat cheating was, you took the option to not be a part of it away from your significant other or your partner. And in taking away that option, you have to give your partner time to trust not only themselves, 
and you, but the environment around them. Because cheating is not just me finding out that you slept with somebody or spoke with somebody or was in somebody's text message. It's not about that. It's about the fundamental, like, primitive reason why we trusted you in the first place. And when you take away that foundation, you eradicate everything that came before the affair. So you have to give your person, especially if they decide to try to work through it with you, the time, the grace, and the respect to heal as they need, they see fit. Because if it takes them a year or two years, you need to understand that you took away a lot of their security and safety when you decided that you were going to be with somebody else. I just think that a lot of people forget that you didn't just have an affair. You broke the foundation on which your relationship standed on. It's just, yo, people need time to heal before they, oh, I can't say that this is the internet. Anyway. Hmm. Things that are 100% micro cheating, part two, part one got pretty personal and now we're back for more. So what micro cheating is, is completely unacceptable behaviors. That is not a full blown affair, but it's tiptoeing on the line and it's trash. So the first thing that's micro cheating, and don't take this the wrong way, but I do not care if you are an overly friend. So far what I'm hearing is men and women kind of share the same type of opinion on this thing. Friendly person, that's just your personality. You should not be flirting with other people. If you're in a committed relationship, it's gonna take some discipline and it's gonna take respect for that person. You don't need to be touchy or overly complimenting. Like, don't do stuff that makes the, your partner feel uncomfortable. Number two, sliding in the DMs or even just reacting to someone's story. You don't know what kind of impression you're giving that person. You're also playing with fire and opening the door to conversations that should never take place. And not only that, it's just not a good look for your partner, so you should not do it. And number three, secret conversations. Look, when you're in a relationship, it is all open book now. Like there should be no secret conversation. There should be no like hiding your phone to text somebody or respond to a DM, none of that. If When someone steps into that realm of secrecy and like this little double life, it's only a matter of time before they start taking it further and further. And at that point, I'm out. I'm Talk about what micro cheating is and what it looks like in a relationship. So micro cheating can have a lot of different definitions, but in its essence, Sense. If you wouldn't want your partner doing it, you probably shouldn't be doing it. If your partner is deleting messages off their phone, that's micro cheating. If your partner is talking to somebody that they shouldn't be talking to, that is micro cheating. Talking as in being flirtatious, inappropriate. If you're going out and making plans with people and not telling your partner about it because you know they would have a negative reaction to it, that is micro cheating. And everybody has different boundaries, their own relationship. Not everybody's idea of micro cheating is going to be the same exact thing. However, I always think it's funny when people don't think micro cheating is a real thing because it absolutely is. You don't have to physically cheat on somebody to be crossing a boundary to be considered being unfaithful to your partner. If your partner is uncomfortable with something and they have made that very clear and you still decide to do that behind their back, you're doing something wrong. Anything, no matter how small, if you wouldn't want your partner doing that, probably falls under the category of micro-cheating. Here are some signs that are considered to be micro-cheating, all right? Listen, we're gonna get into this topic. Cause a lot of people misunderstand this type, this type of concept. But we're gonna get into it so you know. Listen now. Number one, all right, when he is, you know, hiding his phone while texting. Okay? Like what you got to hide for? What 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 exactly do you have to hide? Right? If you are trying to hide anything, that means you feel like your partner not gonna be comfortable with what you're doing what you're doing or what you're trying to sneak doing you know what i mean that's a form of micro cheating number two being too flirty with other people you know what i mean with co-workers um with somebody who you kind of say or you kind of feel like is trying to take him away from you you know what i mean he being real flirty with them 
like or somebody who you don't trust you know what i mean yeah that's a form of micro cheating and number three last but definitely not least following a bunch of models following a bunch of you know women who post provocative stuff you know what i mean like on instagram you following liking commenting you know what i mean you got a whole bunch of on the following list of, of nothing but models and you liking this stuff or they're liking you know those women's stuff like they know it's disrespectful but that's micro cheating listen if your man is doing either one of these things then he's micro cheating he has overly flirtatious behavior he's steady giving out his phone number to women he's hiding his wedding ring or he's hiding the fact that he's in a relationship maintaining inappropriate relationships with their exes becoming overly involved in someone else's social media having secret friendships with people stalking a crush online trying to impress someone that you like or have a crush on turning to the opposite sex for your emotional needs when your relationship is on the rocks asking the opposite sex inappropriate or personal questions a man in a relationship is having conversations with other women online he says it's not that deep the worst thing you can do is minimize how a person feel by saying it's not that deep it may not be that deep to you but the relationship is not just about you the relationship is about how the other person feels as well and if you're doing something, especially when it comes to the opposite sex of who you would naturally be attracted to, and you haven't had that conversation with your partner, then you're wrong. You can't justify that behavior. You're wrong. And to be having conversations like, at this point, it doesn't even matter about the type of conversations that you're having. The point is, is you're having conversations outside of the consent of the relationship as a whole. And I think that's selfish. And I think when people are selfish, they make relationships fail. It's, it's that deep. I know y'all have heard of cheating, but have you heard of micro cheating? These are small things that might go unnoticed in your relationship that your partner might be doing behind your back that are either signs they're gonna cheat on you eventually or signs that they're having fantasies of cheating on you. So here are three of them, so you could just be on game. Number one, if they follow a bunch of Instagram models or half naked girls, they're, they're, that's micro cheating, I ain't gonna lie, because regardless of what they say, oh, I forgot I was following them. No, they did not, bro. They are looking at half naked girls on a screen fantasizing about having relations with them and if you disagree with me stop being delusional because bro is clearly manipulating you into thinking this behavior is okay so he still talks to his ex or is still in communication with his ex bro i don't care what anyone says once you're in a relationship your ex is not your friend there's no possible way you could be platonic friends with someone you used to do the nasty with the only reason he's friends with his ex is so that he can keep his ex on the back burner just in case you and him don't work out three if you bring up a concern or an insecurity in your relationship and he gets defensive why is he getting defensive if he has nothing to hide? Think about it. He, there's no reason for him to get defensive. If you're genuinely coming to him expressing how you're feeling, he should be wanting to fix it or help you talk you through it. it Y'all are on the same team. It's not you versus him. So if he gets defensive, that's a huge red flag. Watch your back, man. So my husband cheated and everyone was like, okay, well, are you gonna go? What are you doing? Are you still there? What are you doing? I said, listen, 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 come closer to all the women who keep asking me because I did post that he cheated. And I am not planning to stay with this man. There is no part of me. I am not the woman. Not at all. And if you look from my other videos, you, you should know by now. Just scroll. I'm not the woman that is going to stay when someone cheats on me. When we went to marriage counseling, every time I'm making these videos, he calls me. Every single time. Every time. Okay. But I'm going to show you where I'm going. Let me show you where I'm going. Hello? No? I'm not changing my children's quality of life for anybody. And so the girl that he did sleep with, like, you literally have upgraded my entire existence and I was already living a lap. Okay, I'm not supposed to say that. Yeah. I'm not, you guys think I'm just gonna up and be like, oh, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving, no. I ain't children's life for anybody, so. He did what he did, but we are in a process. It takes time, we have businesses, we have children, it takes time. You stayed, he got away with it, babes. Babes. If you know me, scroll my page. He didn't get away with it. Then meeting a married man, that means he's taken. We all know what married means, correct? and you decide you want to pursue him or uh, date him and knowing he's married. The two things I feel like married men want the most, cause nine times out of 10 are not leaving their wife and I'm only giving experience because I was the married woman. They want sex and a therapist. 
I repeat, sex and a therapist. They often withdraw from their wife sexually, or sometimes they still are very sexual with their wives, but it's something else that they kind of want. Maybe something they're seeing on Pornhub, or maybe they homies telling them this is what the chicks is out here doing. And two, they always want to talk about their wife. Don't lie to me and tell me they don't, because they do. Every time their wife get on their nerves, they're calling you. Every time their wife get on their nerves, they're somewhere trying to do something with you. And they want you to know all about her and how much they hate her and how she's Corella DeVille and how she gets on her nerves and how she don't wash his clothes and wash his dishes and don't do this and don't suck and don't fuck. But you ever notice he never leaves her? So she doing all this crazy stuff. Why he don't leave her? Oh, because of the kids. Oh, because, you know, our properties. Oh, because of money. Let me tell you one thing for sure, two things for certain. A motherfucker who want to leave, and I'm probably not the person you want to listen to be on here cursing, go fucking leave. Baby, don't get duped into that bullshit. Tell that man to go to therapy and tell that man to fuck his wife. And if you don't want to fuck her, fuck his hand, okay? Because you about to be drawn into some bullshit you ain't even ready for. So don't do it to yourself. Don't take yourself down 10 levels just for attention, just for money that he gives you. It's never worth it because you're going to end up hope, heart, heartbroken, excuse me. And even if he does leave his wife, what do you think he's going to end up doing to you? It's fun. It's cool. But baby, eventually you're going to be the same woman in that story. So a little bit of granny advice. Leave that man alone and just wait for your man. Even if you don't want a man, leave that man alone and just court a bunch of guys out here who's single. Don't, don't do it to yourself. I just think, I'm telling you, I'm not going to say I think because my husband would have never left me if I didn't leave him. Okay? Just let's get in any man, if you really think about that you're with including exes that i wasn't married to would have never left if i didn't leave so knowing from experience they're not going nowhere unless you go so don't just don't do it to yourself that's granny advice have a great day happy sunday hey y'all it's been a long day of working so i'm looking crazy but i just saw somebody post something on tiktok that really stood out to me and i really could relate to so basically it was saying something about like micro cheating and how it's basically you know, deleting messages, having um, secret like relationship or friendship with, um, you know, people outside of your relationship, being cool with someone that your partner is uncomfortable with, um, remaining friends with your ex and, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, wow, I didn't know it was a name for that. And like, I remember in my last relationship, like my ex got caught several times, just like entertaining women, you know, doing all those things that, you know, he knew he shouldn't have been doing and things that just made me very uncomfortable. And his main thing would always be like, you know, well, I've never had sex with anyone. Don't really believe that. But I'm like, you know, you don't have to have sex with someone just to cheat and so yeah you're a micro cheater like you don't deserve me i don't care if you didn't fully stick your peen in someone else or whatever like you had an emotional conversation with them you being on facetime showing your private parts to others you you know falling in love with your co-worker all that stuff is cheating to me so yeah i'm just glad i was able to put a name to that micro cheaters yeah it's crazy if you're doing any of these things you're micro cheating part two if you are having secret relationships or friendships behind your partner's back so if you tell your partner you're going to work and you're going to movies you're going to the movies with another girl that's micro cheating if you tell her you're with your homeboys but you're not with your homeboys that's micro cheating number two lying about your relationship status if you're going around telling everybody you're single but you're not single you literally been in a relationship for years or i don't think facebook is a big deal but some people think facebook is a big deal just make sure you do what your partner is comfortable with number three maintaining contact with your exes what is the reason what is the reason i've had someone reach out to me that's been in a relationship for years that I haven't been in a relationship since high school with. And if I told him if I was your girlfriend, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't appreciate the fact that you're reaching out to me, even if it's just a how you been, because it doesn't matter. I don't care. That's cheating. Like and drop a comment and make sure you follow me because it's going to be a part three. Let's talk a little bit about micro cheating. It's tiny actions that a partnered person can take that break down the trust in their relationship, but it might not quite qualify as cheating because maybe there's no sexual component. And if there's no sexual component and if it's not actually cheating, why does it matter? It matters because it breaks down the trust 
and it can also kind of like come along with this gaslighting component. So let's discuss what are some behaviors that might be considered micro cheating. Texting an ex that you know your partner doesn't really want you to have contact with, but you don't seem to think it's a big deal. Having conversations with somebody about being sexually attracted to them, but not doing anything. Talking negatively about your partner to somebody else that could be a love interest. It could even be repeatedly liking or commenting on somebody's photos. And these might seem like minor things, but if they make your partner uncomfortable, then they make your partner uncomfortable. It is why one of the most important parts of a relationship is communication. Because at the core of love is a desire to understand this person that you're with, this person that you say you love. And in order to understand this person at a deep level, you have to communicate with them at a deep level. And if you end up communicating with them, you'll know what micro cheating is in your relationship and you'll know what it isn't. And you'll know when you've done something to cross that boundary, instead of gaslighting your partner and saying, girl, you're just crazy. Or what's wrong with you? Why would you take, make it such a big deal? You'll just say, you know what? I'm sorry that I did something to hurt you. Can we figure it out? Can we fix this? So y'all, stop micro cheating out here. Say it with your chest. If you don't want to be with somebody, don't be with them. Stop hurting people. Okay, just some takeaways that I get from this whole situation is flirting on social media is almost like the gateway temptation to cheating and great sex. <laughs> just kidding but so you have to be very it's a thin line because some people can just do it to be welcoming and be being friendly and um some people are doing it to get something out of it so it's it's a thin line you guys let me know down below if you have been cheated on on social media or do you feel like flirting is not something on social media that can be taken serious or is it flirting is cheating on social media you guys let me know down below leave your comments and we can discuss it and have these conversations on my morning show, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Okay, love you guys. Till next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.